So we've taken a look at ways that we can store information, um, uh, primitive data types and strings into arrays. What about, uh, what about an object that we create? So in this program, what we're going to do is we're going to make a class. We're going to create objects of that class inside an array to keep them, uh, keep them organized. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do for this is we're going to create a, uh, a new class here. Uh, so I'm going to do that here, and it's going to be uh, dog.java. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at what kind of functionality we want to uh, incorporate into our dog class here. So I'm going to start it off public, cla uh, public class dog. Uh, now our, we're going to have two pieces of data uh, as the members. So private string, well, the dog will have a name and uh, private int, uh, we'll have a hunger level. So we're gonna keep track of their names and how hungry the dogs are. Uh, so our constructor is gonna look like this. So public dog, and uh, we're not gonna send it any parameters. We're gonna use some, uh, some randomization in order to uh, determine what the name and hunger dog. So I picked, um, so we're gonna have uh, an array here of dog names to pick from. And I picked five pretty common uh, dog names. So uh, it doesn't matter, you can, you can pick uh, other ones if you want. Um, I just literally looked up a list online of common dog names and this was what was generated. Oops. There we go. So I've got my dog names here. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll set the name to a random one of those dog names. So uh, name is going to be equal to uh, dog names. Um, and which element of dog names? We're gonna use a random number for this. So uh, we'll do an integer uh, math.random. Uh, math.random times five. Okay. Uh, and then what we'll also do is we'll set a random hunger level. Uh, so hunger is going to also be a random number from uh, zero to four. So yeah, uh, so remember when you're doing a random element from, uh, from an array, uh, you use something like this where this is usually the length. I could have done like uh, dog names.length here. I left it at five because uh, it would be zero, one, two, three, four. Um, and it's pretty much the same. Okay, so that is our dog creation um, constructor method. Uh, now let's uh, make a few other things that we're going to need. So uh, public string uh, get name so that we can access the name from the main program. So we'll just do a return name. Uh, we'll do a public int get hunger, which will uh, similarly uh, return the hunger value, return hunger. And uh, then down here, uh, just a couple extra things that we're going to need. Uh, so we're gonna do a public void. We're gonna create one called hungrier. Uh, that will indicate that the dogs are getting hungrier. So our hunger value is going to be equal to uh, hunger plus and uh, I'll just do a, a random here. Let's do times three plus one. That'll be fine. And the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the dogs. So uh, public void feed, and that's just gonna set the hunger back to zero. Okay, so 
the dogs will gradually get hungrier uh, and then we will feed them, you know, when that becomes necessary. Okay, so let's go back to the main program and then start using this. Um, so just like before, this is how you would construct an object. So uh, dog, let's call this our, this will be our alpha dog is equal to a uh, new dog. There we go. So alpha will be some dog given a random name out of the five and have a random uh, a number set. Now here's the problem. Here's how we're going to construct a, uh, an array of dogs. Um, and then I'll explain what's happening here. So dog, we put open close square brackets because it's an array. Uh, we'll call this pack one. So this is, a, I guess, a pack of dogs that we'll be feeding. Uh, gets the value of new uh, dog, and we'll put we'll make ten of them. Okay. So here's what's going on here. We've got new. New is our constructor term, but what is it actually constructing here? It is not constructing 10 dog objects, it's constructing an array of dogs. 10 dogs have been created, but their constructors haven't been activated. So we've got kind of space for 10 dogs. Uh, it knows that each of them will have, uh, uh, say like, um, go up to the methods here, a name and a hunger, so those values have been set. However, this constructor method hasn't actually been activated yet because this constructs the array, not the actual dog objects. So here's what you've got to do when you're creating an array of objects. Um, you've got to use a for loop in order to construct all those values. So we're going to go while i is less than, um, let's go pack one dot length because we are gonna traverse the uh, dog pack array, constructing each dog as we go. So, uh, sorry, pack one element I is going to become a new dog. So this is very similar to the construction of our alpha because you can actually uh, separate this into two lines. You don't have to do the construction when you are declaring uh, the actual object here. So we've got the declaration of the objects and then this handles the construction of the objects. So this is uh, object array construction. This is uh, array element construction. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through there one uh, element at a time and construct them all with a random name and a random amount of hunger. Okay, so now we're going to do it this way. Uh, let's do a system.out.println. Uh, let's say it is feeding time for the dogs. And uh, we're gonna do a, a loop. Well, tell you what, let's, uh, let's get some food here. Um, I'm gonna make a new value here. Int food, let's say we have 20 foods. Let's go with that. While food is larger. Now we don't wanna totally run out, although we might still. Um, we're not gonna track it too carefully. Um, so while our amount of food is larger than two, we are gonna do this. The first thing that we're going to do, uh, let's say uh, dogs hungrier. So first thing that happens here is the dogs become hungrier. So four int i gets the value zero while i is less than, again, pack one dot length. I'm realizing now I could have saved myself some time by copying and pasting. So we're going to traverse 
the pack one array and make each of the dogs in the array hungrier. So here's how we do that. So we're gonna access pack element pack one element i and each element is an object so each one is going to have its own hungrier uh, access to the hungrier method so we're going to do it this way so we're accessing each of the elements and we can access each element's hungrier method uh, like this uh, and it works just fine Okay, so what are we doing next? So let's uh, put feed question uh, mark. If the dogs are very hungry, we are going to feed them. So for, uh, ah, I'm gonna remember that I can copy paste here. So I'm gonna be traversing the array yet again, uh, feeding the dogs possibly as they go. So if uh, pack one, uh, element i dot get hunger is larger than or equal to eight. Then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed that dog. So uh, pack uh, one element i dot feed. That's the first part. Then I'm gonna say that I fed the dog. So system.out.println. Um, so let's say this will be pack one element i dot get name uh, plus um, was fed. We'll do it like that. And then uh, the last thing is we need to uh, reduce our amount of food by one. So we're going to do a, a food minus minus. Um, now, after this loop is done here, uh, I'm going to do a system.out.println time to go to the store. Okay, so let's run this and then see what we have. I have a feeling I'm gonna have a typo here somewhere. All right, there it is. So uh, if, okay, it's just my bracketing here. So if pack one element I, okay. And apparently I've left a semicolon off of this. There we go. Okay, so um, feeding time. Uh, it gives me all of the dogs as they were fed. Time to go to the store. Okay, so the last thing that I want to add to this is how do we use the, uh, the alternate traversal method, say just if we wanted to print the names of the dogs. So before we do feeding time, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to um put in here um uh, the the list of dog names so uh list of dogs uh and i put this extra println thing here just to keep a little bit of space between these two two things that are happening okay so how do we use uh the other way of traversing the array when you're using objects instead of um, instead of like a primitive data type. And the truth is it's actually not different. Because you can make one, um, one object equal to another object, we're gonna do it this way. So for dog, now this is like a, like a, a temporary thing. So I'm gonna call it temp dog. And where is it getting all of these objects from? It will be pulling them from the uh, pack one array. Now, what's gonna happen is it's gonna traverse pack one, uh, and each time temp dog is going to become one of the dogs from the pack. 
Um, so all we need to do is actually system.out.println. Um, oh, so this is temp dog. And because we've made our temp dog equal to one of the elements from pack one, it will be able to get the name that it has. Uh, okay, so we run this. And I go to the top. There we go. This is our list of dogs uh, using the alternate uh, traversal method, which works just fine. So uh, as you get into, say, uh, pro program design, where you're going to have a whole bunch of objects that all have the same type, it's often you know, pretty handy to, uh, to make an array of them. Uh, that way you can you know, take advantage of uh, this traversal method or uh, a loop to actually go through all of them. So try to look for opportunities to do that um, uh, and then do some practice as well with uh, taking objects, making arrays of those objects.